Hello and thanks for joining us on another episode of Agenda 2030. On today's episode, we will once again give you an insight into the impact of the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals, popularly known as the SDGs in Nigeria. I am Toyi and Kamyang John. Stay with us. As usual, we will be feeding you with some of the news from the untiring efforts of the federal government to attain the SDGs. First, we take the planned strategic partnership between the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs and a Chinese firm for a digital revolution in Nigeria. But that will be after this break. Agenda 2030. As a successful framework for the Millennium Development Goals, the global community rolled out a bigger, deeper and more encompassing framework called the Sustainable Development Goals. Designed to transform our world, lift the poor out of poverty, as well as ensure inclusive and healthy society. On Agenda 2030, we take you on a media trip to the global destination of the future we want. With everyone on board, we focus on the people and their struggle, the civil society and their agitations, the government and hard development effort, the global development agenda, its 17 goals and 169 targets. We bring you all the deliberations, insightful conversations and high-level partnerships on the road to global destination. Agenda 2030, showing on this channel. Agenda 2030, leaving no one behind. As part of concerted efforts to boost economic growth in a country, the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Sustainable Development Goals, Princess Adechoke Orilope Adifuliri, has assured the commitment of the government to continue to create a conducive environment for more foreign investors into the country. This, she said, will further aid the efforts to successfully implement the Sustainable Development Goals in Nigeria. Princess Orilope Adifuliri made this known when investors from Guangdong, New South Group from China, paid her a cut of visit in her office to discuss possible investment plans and partnership with the Nigerian government towards achieving quality education, improving health care, power supply and eliminating malaria in the country. The meeting is a follow-up to the China Digital Summit held in May. Princess Orilope Adifuliri is optimistic that the partnership, once consummated, would ensure a flexible and sustainable economy, reduce unemployment, and foster peace and progress in Nigeria, hence attracting more investors via the free trade zone. We will try as much as possible to work with the government of uh, the ministry and agencies of government that they were willing to work with, and the subnational government, especially Ugo State, to see how we can. Uh, facilitate and uh, do more of uh, preliminary work and ensure that we uh, make uh, the relationship more flexible, more sustainable for the benefit of Nigeria. Knowing fully that any investment in Nigeria will create jobs to, for our people and we create uh, prosperity. Vice President of the group, Dengu, believes that cooperation from the Nigerian government would attract other investors from China and also ensure better productivity as the group is already working with the Ogun State government. We want to uh, establish a project to in the uh, anti malaria, you know, the very uh, bad disease here. We, we want to do something to help people here to uh, eliminate uh, anti malaria. And uh, the main project now we are uh, doing in Nigeria is one is uh, we have a, a free trade room in uh, uh, Ogun State and do some uh, and attract some uh, investor from China to come here to invest and do some uh, manufacture here and uh, make, uh, produce some product here. In a bid to further reduce the incidences of maternal, child and infant mortality across the country, the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Sustainable Development Goals has equipped the neonatal department of the National Hospital Abuja with additional 10 incubators, 20 phototherapy machines and 2 ambulances. The Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs, Princess Adejoke Urilukwe Adefulure, who made a presentation at the National Hospital, said the government had a mandate to ensure safety of lives. Princess Orilokwe Adefuliri said the directive which was given by President Muhammadu Buhari 
was to ensure that the rate of infant and maternal mortality is reduced drastically in the country, as well as save lives of many babies delivered both in the hospital and those referred to the hospital. The presentation of 10 incubators, 20 phototherapy machines and two ambulances to the neonatal department of the National Hospital is to complement the efforts of the hospital and the Ministry of Health. Princess Orilokwe Adefuli recalled on private and international organizations to partner with the government in ensuring that infant and maternal mortality reduces greatly in the country, while also noting that similar equipment were donated to other hospitals in Abuja and other states which include Lagos, Oyo and Kanu, amongst others. Well, I visited the hospital and I found that there's need for us to complement, the office to complement the existing facility uh, the neonatal ward, uh, knowing that the rate of the uh, infant death uh, need to be uh, reduced drastically. So in doing that, we need to get this uh, uh, hospital furniture known as uh, incubators and uh, phototherapy machine. And uh, we've decided to give to some hospital. National Hospital Abuja is very important, one of the hospitals that we have supplied, we've given to states also. Uh, incubators is for the uh, premature babies and uh, to keep them warm to the extent that they will be okay and they live. And then in order, uh, for the therapy machine uh, lamp is for the prevention of neonatal jaundice that kills baby and damage the brain, as we have listened to, I mean, heard from the, uh, the doctor. The consultant. So, having these two machines here, as uh, in the last six months that we have brought them, has saved a lot of lives of our children. And I'm sure that since then we don't have a record of uh, a death of babies uh, since we brought the machine because it has uh, prevented it from happening. So, we are going to get more for it because we know now a national hospital is a big hospital that serves other hospitals. And we have given to some hospitals in, also in Abuja. You've given to some state, Ogun, Oyo, Lagos, and uh, Kano, and few other states. And we will continue to provide this uh, 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 equipment to save the life of our children. The infant death must go down drastically, and we want to possibly eradicate it. Because the joy of every mother is to have the baby for nine months in their womb and have the baby growing up in their arms. So for a baby, for a mother to have the baby in the womb for nine months and lose the baby, you know what the trauma that comes with it and um, psychological trauma that comes with it can lead to depression. So we don't want that to happen anymore. We want our all our baby to live. And also we, the government of Nigeria is also intensifying efforts in making sure that vaccination of uh, children from zero to five is ongoing. The Ministry of Federal Ministry of Health is doing that and recording the uh, the distribution of vaccine to ensure that our children live because it's important to, to prevent death from age zero to five. If you can prevent that, then growing up will not be an issue. So this is the first stage and the second one is uh, uh, vaccine to get to our children healthy and uh, be alive. The Chief Medical Director of the National Hospital, Dr. Jafaru Momo, who received the items at the hospital, commended the efforts of the government in providing the equipment. Momo said the equipment will serve the hospital and patients and those on referrals in the most needed areas. He said that the incubators and phototherapy machines were already in use for babies with low birth weight, premature babies, and those born with several complications. According to him, the two new ambulances will be very useful as most of the fleets in the hospital are old and needed to be replaced. Two brand new ambulances are being donated today to us. Um, of course, you know the usefulness of uh, an ambulance in a, a referral hospital. It enables us to move patients uh, to our hospitals and uh, patients have benefited from ambulances. Most of our fleet of ambulances is getting old, so receiving two new ambulances makes it very useful that we can offload some of the very unserviceable fleets of ambulances. The chairman of the hospital board, 
Right Honorable Patricia Ete lauded the initiative of the Presidential Advisor on SDGs, describing it as a great advantage. She noted that the facility had specialists and experts in neonatology to man the equipment and provide professional care to infants. This donation will go a long way to assist the National Hospital most especially our patients and Nigeria at large. The problem of uh, mortality rate is so high and if every government has been doing this, you know, today we should have been reduced in the, uh, from the death of each children and mother. Now that even the president in his uh, magnanimity has even given us extra uh, 1% to the health services. I know that will help a lot. So it is a continuation of what the president is doing, that his special, senior special advisor is doing, and we really appreciate her. We really appreciate the gift, and we say that God will continue to make our country progress, most especially in the area of medical services. As part of its efforts to realize the target of Goal 16 and the Global Goals for Sustainable Development, the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs has entered into a strategic partnership with the Institute of Peace and Conflict Resolution to check the challenges of violent conflicts in Nigeria as the country prepares for another round of elections. The need has become more compelling. Peace, love and tolerance are some of the most desired as the government continues to flip every opportunity in search of end to violent conflict and violent extremism, which has plagued part of the country with visible threat to development. But the government says there is no resting on its arts until lasting peace is achieved. This was the key factor that prompted the strategic dialogue and partnership between the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Sustainable Development Goals and the Institute of Peace and Conflict Resolution with the objective of promoting peaceful coexistence in the country. According to the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Sustainable Development Goals, Princess Adejoke Orelope Adefulure, the effort is in line with the provisions of Goal 16, which seeks to ensure a peaceful society built on strong institutions and where justice reigns. Peace cannot be compromised in Nigeria and the world. Uh, let us embrace peace and live in peace and work in peace for the progress and prosperity of Nigeria. We want also to appeal to our religious leaders in your churches, in your mosque, please preach peace. In our community meetings also, let's uh, preach peace. The Director General of IPCR thanked the Senior Special Assistant to the President for her office's readiness to partner the Institute and promised to embark on more interventions that will tackle violent crisis in Nigeria. But what we want to prevent is violent conflict because naturally conflicts are inevitable. Um, even identical twins will often you know, have their differences and so for us in the institute, we are concerned about you know, the rising wave of violent conflict in the country and we are looking for strong partners like your office so that we can use some of the information that we have in our, our empirical research that we have done to deal with the root causes of these conflicts. The institute has a mandate of conducting researches and carrying out interventions in communities disturbed by violent conflicts. When the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development was adopted, one key strategy for successful implementation was partnership. This cuts across vertical and horizontal levels. In line with this, the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Sustainable Development Goals, saddled with the responsibility of coordinating the SDGs in Nigeria, has been governizing all stakeholders. The recent of which is the interministerial meeting with representatives from the ministries, departments and agencies. The stakeholders meeting was aimed at tackling the challenges of mainstreaming the SDGs into the plan and budgets of the various NDAs. The meeting was also targeted at addressing the disconnect between planning and implementation, poor budget implementation and poor linkage between budget and planning. 
At the interministerial meeting held in Abuja, the Director of Finance and Accounts, Adamu Bala Zakari, who represented the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs, Princess Adejoke Urolokwe Adefulire, re-emphasized the need for integrating the SDGs into the plans of the NDAs, while also alighting the effects of budget and planning in the implementation of the SDGs. He noted that more progress would be recorded if the MDAs adhered to technical advice and suggestions. The technical paper is uh, uh, principally dwelling around uh, what you say planning, budgeting of uh, SDG activities. How ministries, MDAs, state government should plan and budget with a view of achieving the SDG goals and objectives. So, believe me, if all the participants here will listen and key in to what the technical people are saying, uh, the future of SDG program in this country is uh, very bright. The Director, Budget Monitoring and Evaluation at the Ministry of Budget and Planning, but FACE assured the commitment of his ministry to continue to work closely with other MDAs to ensure the SDGs is integrated into their plans. They are working together by making sure that in the preparation of the implementation plan of the ARGP, the ministries integrate the SDG initiatives into those uh, plans to make sure that they are implemented in the annual budget. The team leader, Inclusive Growth Unit of the United Nations Development Program, Robert Asogwa, presented the offer of service by the UNDP to support national plans and implementation of the SDGs in Nigeria. UNDP has been at the forefront of pushing countries you know, to move ahead with the SDG. In Nigeria, we've been working um, extensively with the SDG office here and also the state level counterparts to ensure, one, that... Um, the SDGs, you know, the Agenda 2030 is mainstreamed into the state plans as well as the national plan. And I think to some extent we have done that because if you look at the, the ERGP, the ERG, Economic Reference Group of Government, the national government, a lot of um, SDG targets we are mainstreamed into that. So it's, we can look at that as an SDG-based plan. You know, but, but the critical challenge is not just about having um, a, uh, an, an SDG plan, uh, a national plan that is SDG based or a sectoral or ministerial plan that is SDG. The most important thing which we are discussing at this meeting is ensure that these plans are mainstreamed into the budget. You know, so it's not just good about having good plans which are SDG based, but ensuring that the budgets derive from these plans, you know, and the expenditure also derives from them. Because the, 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 we have noticed this weakness at the national and also at the subnational, but more at the subnational levels, that the plans are there, but the budgets, you know, the budgets and the expenditure don't take from the plans, you know, but that's, that should not be so. The, the, the budget should derive from, from the plans, so that when, when you are implementing the budget, you know the, your results you expect, the results you expect to achieve should be as those results and those results you expect uh, uh, from the plan and from the SDG. And this is very critical because uh, most often, especially at the state level, you see that uh, when, they have, uh, they, they, when they are doing the annual budget, they don't look at the plan. And when they are even spending, they don't look at the budget and they don't look at the plan, which should not be so. And at the national level, we see that uh, even though it is, it is better here, but we see that we see still some weaknesses. Because even at the, the national assembly that do appropriation, some and most, some of the time, not most of the time, you know, they don't look at, at, at the plan when they do their appropriation. But what we are preaching and what we are conversing at the national level and across the states in Nigeria and elsewhere is to ensure, one, that all medium-term and long-term plans of the government, both at national and at sub-national level, are that SDGs are mainstream, the agenda 20 are mainstream to the plan. And two, that these plans reflect in the budgets. You know, so when you do your, your annual budget, these plans are extensively re reflected. And when you spend money, when you spend from the budget, the expenditure linked to the budget and the budget linked to the plan. That is the message we are pushing as UNDP. Nigeria will continue to support the United Nations in all its efforts, including the attainment of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. I thank you.
Agenda 2030, showing on this channel. Agenda 2030, leaving no one behind. Thanks for staying with us. As we move into the audience participatory segment, remember you stand a chance to participate and win special prizes just by answering our weekly questions. You can also send in your questions and suggestions to the producer via the email address and phone number on your screen. And as usual, we kick off the segment by first bringing to you views from our respondents on the streets. Um, as citizens, I would say every human being loves peace and security. But what brings insecurity and violence is simply the socio-political system. When the system is faulty, it breeds all kinds of, you know, vices, and the peace and security will be truncated. So, what we have to look at is, what is the cause of the problem? Of course, we know the problem. The problem is killing, lack of respect for human lives. And we do it one tomly, without any regret. It's happening in almost every part of the country. You know, society is a kind of place that composed of many people. Some, you must have corrupt people in the society. So I think a better way of citizens to make sure that the society is secure is just to keep eye on those corrupt ones. The issue of insecurity is a global phenomenon but the major problem in Nigeria that happen that make our security have lapses is what? Ethnicity and religion but we the first thing we need to do we need to come back together as one. Let's have one Nigeria and then we can tackle our common problem which is insecurity. One thing is that what we need most in this our country is we need love. So if there is love, we can do everything better. I would say that um, the two major facts that are very important in ensuring peace and security in Nigeria is love and unity. Because when we don't love each other and we are not united, we don't care about the things happening around us. As such, things are getting spoiled day by day. So I encourage every Nigerian citizen to love each, each other, irrespective of our religion, belief, and doctrines. We should love each other and um, fight for unity. I think the earlier the youth ignore most of all those things that cause our security challenges, they're better for us. In the first place, the elites are using the, uh, the youth, the, the lower class, to cause trouble, challenge, uh, challenge, problems, to gain access to the level they are going to. So the earlier they stop listening to all these petty things, some people will come with religion, some will come with ethnicity. And I was just privileged to be in some countries that have like more than 400 ethnic groups living peacefully and other things. But it's just, uh, they'll try inciting crisis problem by telling them this is not your religion, this person is not your ethnic group person, this person is not. So, but if you can ignore these things and move ahead in life, I think, this place will be peaceful, then uh, maybe get engaged in one or two things that the government is employing. It's obvious that we know that the government is not being too fast in creating job opportunities. But uh, that we can create job opportunities, you know, just in our own little way, you understand. Then try as much as possible to curtail our expenditure. <music> 
Welcome back. Last week we asked, the SDGs is a successor framework to the Millennium Development Goals, true or false? Certainly the answer is true. The SDGs is a successful framework designed by world leaders to complete the unfinished business of the MDGs and help address the lingering issues of giving sustainable development to the citizenry. For our question for the week, the issue of health and well-being are addressed in which of the goals of the SDGs? Do send your answers to the number and email on your screen. Do endeavor to include your name and your phone numbers in your response. Remember, you can always watch this program and other episodes by subscribing to our YouTube channels on youtube.com forward slash fresh news TV and youtube.com forward slash agenda 2030 TV. You can always watch the program live on Facebook. Log on to www.facebook.com forward slash fresh news ng and www.facebook.com forward slash agenda 2030 TV. Follow us on all our social media platforms at Agenda 2030 TV on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Remember to drop your comments and share with your contacts. Do use the hashtag Agenda 2030 and Agenda 2030 TV. And that's our package. Thank you very much for being part of the program. I am Toyin Kamiang John. We will see you again next week. Until then, bye.